Hello and welcome, my name is Rob Chisholm and today we're going to talk about lift and how it works and how to identify it. So if we take a cliff for instance, it's got an easy shape to it, it's easy identifiable, but what happens when you come to an area that you're in, say above what could appear to be a flatland, anything that's basically away from a cliff face or ridge, and how would we identify and use that? So we're going to talk through that now. If you're in the position we're in now, so we just identify the glider, there's a glider there. If you were flying over that area, what would you be looking for? Whereas I guess a load of people watching videos like this will probably um, identify the air comes up and goes up the ridge like that. And that's where your ridge lift would be. Well, that's one way to look at it, if you want to stay on a ridge, that is. But if you want to fly away from the ridge, which is the point of having a glider, is so you can glide off somewhere and stay away from the restrictions of a ridge, you do need to understand how the air works. So let's just say, for example, 10 miles an hour is the wind speed here. And then the wind speed over here could be 3 miles an hour. What would you be looking for? So I'll give you 10 seconds to say in your own mind, what are you looking at in the image? What are you going to identify? And we'll start that from now. So there's your 10 seconds. I wonder what you as a viewer have identified. For me, this is what I would say to the students on my Pilot Pro courses. This is the way I get them to look at the uh, the rise in air, what's going on. It would be obvious to me, uh, but it may not be to everybody, so, you know, it comes with time, that if you just take the field here, I'm going to draw it there, it goes along, and then it goes up, and then it comes down. Equally, this area here, is higher than this area here so this is this bit is higher and you can even use that dotted line if you want it along there so this side is lower or getting lower down to there and that side is getting lower down to there so you should be able to see if I choose um, go back to red hey if you can look at these lines here you will see they go up go up and then down and then up and then down. So you could say, what does that mean? How does that equate to where a thermal would be? Well, if you go back to your ridge, your beloved apron strings where a lot of people sit, that's producing any air that goes up there. It's forcing it up to you and you can take off there and make use of it. Well, these areas here and this raised area here, they all do that the same as the tree area does. Obviously, you wouldn't fly low over the trees. That would be very foolish and dangerous. There's no room to manoeuvre. But if you're out here where Nick, Nick is, my student, I've gone out here to show him where a thermal is, and then we climb. So basically, if you look at the area, you should hopefully start to see that's pretty flat um, up to about there. This is actually higher. This is lower. And all of this information helps once you understand what it's like will help you to identify where the thermal is likely to track where it is going when you hear the words house thermal so house thermal it sort of makes me laugh sometimes because some people say if we fly over say to here when i get there i'll get a thermal and i go no <laughs> you need to time it you need to know when is the right time to go there and there's a lot more to learn that's something else you would need to learn which will be on places like RTV which I have as a private channel and you can access this information many thanks